Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on simple classification of substances and we are going to be looking at um, constituents of matter. So previously we were talking about temporary physical, temporary chemical and permanent changes. We were able to discuss um, each group and some of the characteristics of these changes. We were also able to look at uh, some examples of components that um, have done go these changes. So you can go and watch out in the next, in the previous videos uh, of those lessons and see what happens in those changes. So for today, we are going to focus on the constituents of matter and we are going to look at elements and we are going to look at compounds. We're also going to uh, get an opportunity also to look at examples of these elements and compounds and also do a few questions in regards to what we are going to discuss today. So we will start first by defining what an element is. And we you notice that uh, the constituent of matter is um, usually made up of pure substances. And these pure substances can either be classified as elements or compounds. So you notice when we are defining both elements and compounds, we must mention the word pure, pure substance. It, it, it's a compulsory uh, word that should be in our definitions. It's very specific. It's not an impure substance, but it is a pure substance. So for element, it's a pure substance which cannot be split into simpler substance by chemical means. So if you are trying to break down the elements, it's not going to be possible to split it because it's, it's, it's an element. It's, it's very small and it cannot be split uh, by any chemical means and it is pure. It's not combined by other uh, things. So that's why it did not split into simpler substances. So examples of elements uh, are like oxygen, hydrogen, uh, copper, sulfur, we have carbon, we have iron. There are so many. We are going to discuss in form two later the periodic table. And you will see that we have so many elements in the periodic table. So these are just examples of some of those elements in the periodic table. So elements are usually made up of atoms. So this brings us to a new definition. So an atom um, elements are made of atoms. So an atom is the smallest particle of an element which can take part in a chemical change. In, the, in, some, in some situations, you notice that the word elements and atoms are used interchangeably. When we get to form two and we'll be discussing um, the structure of the atom and the periodic table, you notice that elements are still atoms, uh, although the atoms is the smallest part of an element. So examples of atoms that we have are like our oxygen also. is There's an oxygen atom, hydrogen atom, copper atom, uh, sulfur atom, carbon atom, iron atom. So because this is a smaller part of the element, so they are also like the same elements we have, we have also the same atoms. So they are usually used sometimes interchangeably as I've said so some atoms can be combined together. When we join together atoms, we usually forms a, a particle known as a molecule. Uh, these atoms can be made of one atom. These molecules can be made of one atom. They can be made of uh, two atoms or more. These atoms can be the same type or different type. So a molecule is usually defined as a smallest particle of an element or compound which can exist separately. Examples are, when you look at monoatomic molecules, they are made up of only one atom. And mostly we are going to look at this as the group eight members in the periodic table later on. Examples are like argon, neon, and helium. They are made of only one atom, but we refer to them as argon molecule. We are also going to define later on also a molecule, what happens in a molecule. And then we have also diatomic uh, molecules, they are made of similar atoms. So for example, if you take two oxygen atoms and you put them together, they form oxygen molecule. You 
pick two nitrogen atoms, you put them together, you form nitrogen gas. If you take two hydrogen atoms, you put them together, you form hydrogen molecule. So these are examples of molecules made up of two atoms, which are the same. And we call them diatomic. They are two diatomic uh, molecules. We also have molecules that are made up of uh, three similar atoms. We call them triatomic. So a common example is ozone. So ozone is made up of three oxygen atoms. So it's still a molecule, but it's made up of three atoms that are similar. So other molecules also can be made up of uh, atoms, but they are not similar. Examples are, for example, hydrogen chloride. We're going to look at this later on and group them also as compounds, but you'll come to that. So if you look at hydrogen chloride molecule, it's made up of an hydrogen atom and a chlorine atom. It forms a molecule and you call it hydrogen chloride. If you look at the common water that we drink, it's made up of different atoms. You have the hydrogen atom, we have another hydrogen atom, and then we have the oxygen atom. So it forms a water molecule. Later on, you also mention as water molecule also as a compound and also hydrogen chloride as a compound. So these molecules that are made up of different atoms uh, usually exist this way and also can also be referred as compounds later on. So let's look at compounds as our next. So compounds are usually pure substance, just like we said in elements, made up of two or more elements chemically combined. They are made up of two or more elements chemically combined. So we will pick um, more than one element, like we had defined before, let's say like oxygen, like hydrogen, like carbon, like chlorine, those ones are elements. If you pick uh, two of them and combine them chemically, you form something we refer to as a compound. So examples of compounds are dependent on the elements that are compound. If we combine only two elements, we add the word uh, with an IDE. For example, if you take sodium element and chlorine element, you're going to form something called sodium chloride. So you have taken sodium and chlorine, you form sodium chloride. You can see the IDE. If you take iron and chlorine, you combine them together, you form iron to chloride. This is chloride. You have an high DE. If you take calcium and nitrogen, you combine them, you form calcium nitride. You can see the IDE. If you take calcium and carbon, you combine them together, you form calcium carbide. You can see the IDE. If you take sodium and hydrogen, you form sodium hydride. You can see the IDE. So these are compounds only made up of two elements only. The other compounds that are made up of more than two elements. So for this case, we should, the word, the common ones usually add the word ATE. It. And for this one, they are combining two elements and one of them is strictly oxygen. So whenever you see an H somewhere in a compound, you know that oxygen must be present in that compound. For example, sodium sulfate, not the H. If you look at sodium sulfate, what happens is that so this sodium sulfate has sodium, it has sulfur and oxygen. Oxygen is one of the elements. If you look at sodium carbonate, we have sodium from the word sodium, carbon, you can see you have carbon, and then it, which represents our oxygen. Then potassium chlorate. So it's made up of potassium, you can see from the word, we have the chlor, which tells us we have chlorine, and then it, which tells us we have oxygen. Then calcium nitrate will be made up of calcium, nitrogen, and oxygen. So we also have another group of compounds, but now instead of adding with ATE, they are going to add with ITE. So for these ones, they are also made up of three elements, but one of the elements is oxygen. But the difference between it and it, 
is that the oxygen is less. If you were to count the amount of oxygen or the number of elements or atoms in the compound of oxygen, for the ITE or it is less than for the eight. So, for example, when we have sodium sulfite, not the it, we still have sodium, we have sulfur and oxygen, which is the same when we are having sodium sulfate. But the only difference comes in now when we are counting the number of elements. You notice that for the ice, it has less elements of oxygen in comparison to it. So another example is calcium sulfite. It has calcium, sulfur, and oxygen. But remember, it's different from calcium sulfate. This one is ice. It has less oxygen. So let's look at uh, some questions uh, in regards to what we have been discussing. Identify the elements present in the following compounds. So we have magnesium oxide. What we note is the IDE. IDE tells us you only have two types of elements. So in this case, we have the magnesium and we have the oxygen. We have the oxygen because you can see the ox oxygen, the oxygen. Then uh, in Roman 2, we have zinc chloride. It's still IDE, which tells us we only have two types of elements. So it will be zinc and then chlorine. And then sodium sulfate, it tells us that we have three elements and one of them is oxygen. So we have sodium, we have sulfur from the word, from the word sulf. So it's sulfur and we have oxygen. Oxygen because we have an eight. It tells us that one of the elements is oxygen. And then finally, we have aluminum nitrate. You can note the eight. This means we have three elements and one of them is oxygen. So we have aluminum, uh, we have aluminum, nitrogen, and oxygen. So this brings us to the end. So in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at symbols of these elements and go into details on how to write that. So see you in the next lesson.